But today, my friends, I'd like to share to you, uh, this is a six-part sermon, uh, which I begin, which, will I, which I think is very appropriate. Uh, the Lord's uh, Prayer is uh, with what we commonly know, has been recited many times. But my question is, do you really understand the Lord's Prayer? Can we recite that prayer together? As we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's commit this time to the Lord. Father in heaven, may we be able to hallow, to praise, to glorify your holy name. As we sung songs of worship, draw us closer to you, Father, through Jesus, this, your Son. This is our prayer this morning, God. And we thank you for your loving embrace. We thank you because you draw near to us. And so we pray, Lord, draw us closer to you. Even as we listen to your word, to your message, to each one of us, Lord, I pray for your special touch, Holy Spirit. Whatever our circumstance, I pray, Holy Spirit, touch each one of us. And so this morning, we commit to you our mind, our heart, our emotion, everything in us, oh God, take hold of our thoughts. And I pray, oh Lord Jesus, that you will be exalted in our midst. This is our prayer. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, Savior, and Friend. Amen. Good morning once again. And shalom. God's blessings to all of you. Are you ready for your summer break? Is, is it summer now? Yes. The sun is out very early and it's, it's, the sunset is uh, late. I think we already have 12 hours sun, sunlight. <laughs> uh, you enjoy summer. Uh, this morning, I'd, I'd like you to, to meditate on, on God's universal power. But before we can really recognize the, the sovereignty of God, we need to have to practice vertical thinking. That's the title of my sermon. What is vertical thinking? Do you think vertically or horizontally? What's your type of thinking? Can you ask somebody, somebody beside you? What's your type of thinking? Straight line, circular? Or <laughs> is that vertical or just horizontal? Plainly horizontal. I'd like you to look at, uh, if you have your Bibles with you, or the traditional printed Bible or your soft an Android phones, you have your Bibles there. Open to Matthew chapter 6, verse, verse 9. So this is the beginning of my six-part series, meaning six sermons on the Lord's Prayer. Uh, I don't know when will be the next part because Pastor Dave will be assuming. Uh, every time he's out, I can continue with the series. So first part of our sermon based uh, on the gospel of Matthew chapter 6 verse 9. Uh, vertical thinking. I, I firmly believe and you will agree with me that Christians, every one of us should practice vertical thinking. What I mean by vertical thinking is being spiritually sensitive. So by these words, vertical thinking, what I'm referring to is spiritual sensitivity. So let me ask you again, are you spiritually sensitive? Maybe you are physically sensitive, that's good. There are insensitive people, but there are sensitive people, di ba? Balat sibuyas ba yun? Are positively, they are sensitive, they, they, are, they care. Those who are, those who are compassionate, are sensitive people. Pero yung mga balat sibuyas, sensitive din. Uh, siguro, a little tweet, uh, tweak or they will become good uh, counselors. So, if you are physically sensitive, that's good. But what I'm 
asking you this morning, are each of us, if you are a child of God, if you are a Christian, do you have that spiritual sensitivity? And Matthew, in the Lord's Prayer, the pattern that is given to us, it's a, actually a pattern. This is commonly call, called the Lord's Prayer, but for me and even other authors say, this, this, this should be called the Disciples' Prayer. The real Lord's Prayer is found in John chapter 17. That's another sermon. I, I have a sermon on that. The real Lord's Prayer. But this one is a pattern given by the Lord for us to follow. And the first pattern says, can we read all of us? Ready, begin. This then is how you should pray. It's a pattern. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. New international version. I'll give you some other translations later. So I believe, I'm convinced that we should practice vertical thinking. We should be spiritually sensitive. But what makes us dull spiritually? The sounds, the noise around makes us spiritually dull. Why are we spiritually insensitive? Have you asked that question? Nganong dili man ko spiritually sensitive. Nganong dili ko aware sa mga panghitabo? Spiritual. In the spiritual world. In the spiritual realm. According to pastor and teacher and author Chuck Swindoll, you know him? This spiritual sensitivity, this is a discipline few have mastered. Only few among the Christians of the world, two billion among them, or more than two billion, few of them have mastered spiritual discipline or spiritual sensitivity. And so if you are one of those who are dull spiritually, you are among the majority. Don't worry. And that's why the challenge for us this morning is to have that spiritual sensitivity. Many Christians are spiritually insensitive, as I said, because of the tendency to think horizontally. Up to that only, we think horizontally. In fact, every day, we are horizontal thinkers. Horizontal thinking is physical sensitivity. It is being aware of our surroundings. In our day-to-day -day existence, we deal with things we can touch, things we can see, things we can uh, feel, things we can taste, and things we can smell. Uh, did you smell something? Something fishy here? You are sensitive though. We have five senses, you know. I just mentioned the five senses. We are physical beings, and so we are endowed with the physical senses. And every day we get used to it, and sometimes we don't appreciate the five senses the Lord has given us. You know, without this, we cannot have science. We, don't, we cannot invent anything, in fact. If we don't have the five senses, the sense of touch, can you touch somebody? Yung in the sisa pa, child sexual abuse prevention. Can you touch somebody? Well, it, it gives a message more than 1,000 texts. Uh, touch, touch. Even the embrace, especially, I just, we just attended a necrological service. We did not say a word. We just hugged the person who was grieving, the, the family who were, the, who were the, the family who had somebody died, a loved one. We just hugged them and we were there. The presence they saw us, they felt us, they smelled us. <laughs> Everything in us, they felt. Physical presence. And this is horizontal thinking. I'm not saying that horizontal thinking is, is bad. In fact, if you are blind, you, you really wish you can see. If you don't have the that sense of smell, you, you wish you can smell. If you, lost your, if you lose your sense of taste, you will not appreciate buffet or any, any food. If you lose your hearing, even if you have a hearing aid, then you will wish to, to have that gift back. You see, sometimes we are so fam over familiar with these physical senses that we don't appreciate it and we don't thank the Lord for it. 
Can you say thank God for the five senses? Lord, thank you that I can see. When I woke up, I can still see my beautiful wife. I can still smell her before taking a bath. Uh, I, I can smear, <laughs> I can touch and even hug. You see, you appreciate this horizontal thinking. This is a practice we get used to since we were born that we forget thanking God about it. But even if you have those gifts, this is not enough. God has endowed you with spiritual senses. And you should practice those spiritual senses. And this morning, the Lord has led me to share to you only one verse. Only one verse. And I, I pray, this is my desire, that we will be able to awaken the spiritual senses in us. Spiritual sensitivity. And so let's begin with the Lord's Prayer. Jesus says, this then is how you should pray. Before he said this, you know what the only request the disciple had for almost three, more than three years they were with the Lord? The only request they had is, Lord, teach us how to evangelize. Teach us how to do missions. Teach us how to pray. Because it was a regular practice. It was a habit of the Lord to draw himself away to go to a place that is silent, mountaintop, and pray alone in, a sol in solitude with the Father. And so after observing those regular times of prayer, the disciples, they, they were asking, they asked, Lord, teach us how. And then the Lord said, this is how you should pray. It begins with these words, our Father in heaven, we honor your holy name. That's from New Living Translation. Uh, so NIV, hallowed be your name. In King James, can somebody read from King James? 1611, a version, translation. You know, from this verse, let me suggest four practices to sharpen our spiritual sensitivity. Four practices, and we should practice that. From this verse, we can see and discover four practices that we should apply in our lives individually, as a family, as a community of faith. If we practice this through the help of the Holy Spirit, of course, by the grace of God, I believe we will be vertically, vertically thinking and we will be sharp in being sensitive spiritually. Number one. If you have your ball pens, if you are used to taking notes, number one, to sharpen our vertical thinking, first thing we need to do is to focus on the right person. Focus on the right person. Who among you here have eyeglasses? Uh, eyeglasses. Can, can you read your Bibles without that? You, you have a hard time. Uh, I just turned 40. I, I praise the Lord, I can still read uh, here without eyeglasses. I, I don't need one. But usually, if you have problems with your eyesight, you lose focus. You, you cannot really read the, the small letters there. And you will be confused. And so if we lose focus, my friends, there will be confusion all around. And so the first practice that we should really focus on is focusing on the person, the right person. And who is that person I'm referring to? The Father. Focus on the Father. Our Father. Ang atong amahan. Here's a prayer that teaches us to focus on God who is the source of everything. If you say, Heavenly Father, we, we sang that. Draw us near, Father, through Jesus, your Son. I did not tell them what to sing, what worship songs to choose. But while I was singing there, Lord, thank you for preparing us for the message this morning. Draw us nearer, Father. Di ba kung mag-ingong kag-amahan? Ano sa may mong I did not grow up with a 
uh, earthly father. I was, we were, we, we were, to say the least, we, we were abandoned, to say the least. Uh, so even today, I struggle uh, how it is to be, to have like a father, an, an earthly father. My wife keeps sharing her uh, wonderful memories about his dad, who is dead, who has been dead long ago. But I, I love her for that. Thank you, my wife, for sharing, for sharing your wonderful memories with her dad. Very sweet thoughts. And I was wondering, is, is it really possible to have that earthly father? For, th for those who did not grow up with the father, I tell you, God, our father, is more loving. Amen? God, our heavenly father, is more able and so if we focus on, on him, my friends, every emotional emptiness, everything you need is assured. And so Psalm 23 is a beloved psalm. Why? Because it speaks to your innermost need, even your emotional need. The Lord is my shepherd. It is the most read or preached psalm verse or chapter in the bible especially in necrological even in funeral services the most well read psalm psalm 23 because it hits the bullseye what we need we need a heavenly father and so my friends if we lose focus on that our spiritual sensitivity will be lost focus on god and know that he is our heavenly father some define God. Let, let me tell you some of the definition of God according to some people. God is a force or a pure mathematical mind. God is a shadowy, shadowy superhuman cloud or force. A ball of fire ready con to consume us. Sparks of life to which we will be reunited. A sentimental grandfather in the sky. From a distance... The world, not a lion, the Lord, aloof, or a fearful celestial policeman. Is that God? How do you define Heavenly Father to you? How do you find God? In your personal experience, what is, who is God to you? Is He a dear Heavenly Father? And so when you pray, Amahan, Akong, Tatay, Jos Ama, Father, do you really feel that He is close, that He is embracing you? Do you really feel that He cares for you? You see, our address of our God is very important. How you address the Lord, our Heavenly Father, is very important. And so when you pray, our Father, He is so close that you are already very near to Him. Just a whisper, just a word. God is there. Now, there are two things that makes God Father. He is Father of all humankind and all things that exist, whether, whether visible or invisible, are, are owned by God, are created by God. And so God, by virtue of creation, is the Father of all, not just humankind, also of angels. Visible and invisible things. Things that exist that are created by God. All recognize and admit that God is the Father. And the scriptures imply God's fatherhood of humankind, including angel. If you try to look at Job chapter 1 verse 6, Job chapter 2 verse 1, and Psalm 86 verse 6, you can scan and you can write notes on that. Later you can check. And Luke chapter 3 verse 38, He is the Father of all who provides for all. Di ba ang tanan maulanan man? Naulanan mo dito bahada? Basig sa bangka lang ang ulan. Nabahaan po mo. No? Tanan man ta. Everyone enjoys sunlight. The evil and the good. That's the grace of God. That's the mercy of the Lord. Because God created everything. And he wants to provide for everyone. But there is a special 
fatherhood of God. By virtue of redemption. First is by virtue of creation, all are uh, children of God, created by God. But by virtue of redemption, only those who personally recognize, accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior are children of God. Are you one of them? Can you say that, God, you are my Father because I am born again? Because I receive Jesus Christ. I believe what he has done on the cross is your act of love. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he provided the means for our salvation, for us to be his children. And so in Ephesians, the Holy Spirit has been given as an advance deposit. Huh? So that we are sure to be adopted as his son. We will be in heaven someday. So my friends, by virtue of redemption, only those who acknowledge that Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior are God's children. It is a personal relationship. And so let me say and say it again. I've been saying this. Let me say this again for the second time once more. And I repeat. You are a child of God only if Jesus is in your heart. It's not by religion that you are saved. It is by relationship in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so here at Beraka Community International and Ezra Renewal Ministries, we are not proclaiming religion. We are sharing the gospel, the message of our Lord Jesus Christ. He came to heaven, from heaven to earth, to show us the way to the Father. And so we thank the Lord. Lord Jesus, thank you that you have reconciled us back to our heavenly Father. You can only say, our Father, genuinely, if Jesus is in you. Don't say our Father if you don't have relationship with him. And the only way is Jesus Christ. Just this morning, let me share what I heard from Ravi Zacharias. You know him? Dr. Ravi Zacharias. He, he preached about globalization and uh, world evangelization. What's the, what's, what's the relationship? Can we still have world evangelization even if we are already a global neighborhood, global market? Can you still preach in yeah, anywhere? We are so secular, we are so plural in religion, and we are so private. So he, he, he pointed out that this secularism, no regard with religion, that's secularism. This pluralism, uh, many religions, opposite to secularism, many religions, no absolute truth. What you feel is right, that's right. That's a relativity, that's pluralism. And we are postmodern today. Our, our culture is plural. We have many things we can choose from spiritually and don't tell them it's wrong. That's pluralism. What they think is right, is right for them. What they feel is right, is right for them. That's dangerous. And the third is private. That's uh, what Father Bulatao says, split level Christianity. You are so holy on Sunday and you bring your faith and religion back in your home and you, re you leave it at home and you go to work without discussing your relationship with God. That's privatization. You don't discuss in public what you practice in private. You don't pray in public, you just pray in private. That's privatization. And so Ravi Zacharias, Dr. Ravi, explained that this secularization, pluralism, and privatization has made our world empty. And so this world today, our generation today, is void of meaning. Because secularism is teaching us to have no shame. That's secularism. And pluralism teaches us that what you feel is right is right. It's against reason. And so we lose reason. Even if we are rational beings. And privatization, he says... It leads us to being meaningless. 
And so the sum of all of that is that we are an empty people. You know what's the the opportunity is when people are empty. We have something to deliver and fill their cup. And so evangelization today is on the rise. The harvest is plentiful. But the laborers are few. And so therefore pray to the Lord of the harvest. Lord, raise more workers. Raise more evangelists. Raise more teachers. Raise more missionaries. Pastors. Workers who have that passion to feel that emptiness, to feel the emptiness of the world. And so we are surrounded by empty people, even in the universities. Very bright people and yet empty. Very wealthy people around and yet walking empty. But you have the gospel and you have the Father who is the source of everything. And so are you ready to be spiritually sensitive? Because the Father will tell you what His will is. He will tell you, my child, you do this. Are you ready? No, the question is, are you rooted in His word? We can only be sensitive to the Father if we are rooted in the word, in the scriptures. And so, my friends, the world needs us today. We are so precious that the world is waiting for our message. The message that we have is very, very precious. Don't keep it to yourself. The treasure, we are jars of clay, and the treasure is inside us. You can be broken. God can mend you again. But let the treasure be shared, be seen by other people. And so, my friends, it is not, it is not through religion that we can be intimate with God, but through a loving relationship that was made possible by his son Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ, God the Father has shown us his immense generosity. Let me repeat that. Through Jesus Christ, God the Father has shown us his immense, his overflowing generosity. And so when you say, Lord, wa man ka magtagad na ko, amahan, wa man ka magtagad, Remember what he has done at the cross. That's the ultimate expression of his generosity. And so let me say this for those who are, uh, who, who has the habit of being anxious. Kinsay mabalak nun diri? Dili nang balak ba? Kanang, sige mabalak Anybody here who is uh, a walking anxious person? <laughs> We, we are, the, well, we get anxious any time of the day, uh, especially my, my 75 year old bachelor, uh, Lolo, he was not married, he is still not married, 75 years old. He says that, uh, you know, what, what worries him is, uh, is not the coming of the Lord, but uh, it's not the end of the world, he says but the end of the month because of the bills. <laughs> so, <laughs> he is saved. He has Jesus Christ. So he, don't, he doesn't worry about end of the world. I don't care. And he is 75, so it's okay for him. But end of the month, he says, he will tremble. <laughs> <laughs> and so he is anxious every uh, 30, 31. Today, 30. Uh, by Ranan. End of the month. You see, we get anxious, human as we are. We have so many things to worry about. But let me quote a uh, former Asian Theological Seminary professor in theology and mission. He is one of my favorite, author, uh, favorite authors, Charles Ringma. You get hold of his uh, uh, devotional book, Whispers from the End of Whispers at the Edge of Eternity. A very nice devotional, Charles Ringma. He says, and I quote, The remarkable message of the gospel is that God's love in Christ is freely given out of God's beneficence and is not based on our performance. It is out of God's generosity, he says. As a result, the playing field has been leveled. 
We don't receive God's blessings because we are clever or powerful. We receive them because God is generous to all who come to Him in humility, in receptivity, and repentance. I unquote. Not performance, my friends. Not power. Not cleverness. But humility, receptivity, and repentance. You see, God's fatherhood comes to anyone at any moment of time that, that when the person is ready to humble, when the person is ready to be receptive to the gospel message, and when the person kneels down and cries for his sin and repent and say, Lord, I surrender everything, my sins, my past, and I turn back and I turn and follow you now. Have you done that? My friends, God is generous. He can be father to you. For those who have done that, praise the Lord, our father. You can call him our father. The second thing we must do to sharpen our vertical thinking, I'm done with the first one, no? Pila ganito? Four, four, two hours siguro ni. One verse. <laughs> Remind me, now I'm my timekeeper here. The second thing we must do to have that spiritual sensitivity is this. Focus on the right place. The first focus is on the person. Because that person is in the right place. Our Father who art in heaven. That's the place you have to focus your mind on to. God is ruling in his throne in heaven. In fact, he runs the entire universe. He is the Lord of the universe. He is the sovereign over all. And he is always in charge. Do you think so? Even with all the chaos around us? Even if some superpowers are claiming that they are, they are ruling and sovereign? Do you think God is still sovereign? I like the song, Lord of the Universe. I don't know if you are familiar with that. Lord of the Universe, hope of the world. Lord of the Universe, hope of the world. There is no other hope but our Father who rules the universe. He is high and exalted. He is in heaven. Let me bring you to the book of Isaiah especially in his experience about who God is in chapter 6 of the book of Isaiah. He says here, he narrates, Isaiah the prophet narrates, In the year that King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated, and on, he was seated on the throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. I was in a wedding yesterday, last night. It was a royal wedding. And so the, the groom was called prince, and the bride was a princess. And there were many princesses. And we were uh, primary sponsors. I don't know what's the royal word for sponsors. So we were there. First time that we became sponsors. And we, we were treated as kings and queens. Royal priesthood. And the, the wedding itself was grand, majestic. Even with the, uh, I think it was budgeted. But it's still, because people were participating, uh, we saw the teamwork, we saw the coordination and the help of people. It was a royal wedding. But my friends, God is more royal. You see, the description of Isaiah here, the train of his robe. He was wearing a robe when Isaiah saw the Lord. His robe filled the temple. Ang katong bride nga nagmart siya, ang siya kataas to iyang length sa iyang robe. Did you wear your gown when you were wed? Oh, katong mga bride, no? Or bride-to-be. Do you like your robe to be one inch long? Ah. 
Di ba, tag-as, patag-as sa iyo na ba? Hangton, matamak kan sa flower girl or <laughs> sa <laughs> bridesmaid, magkatamak. <laughs> the length of the robe is the measure of the majesty of the royalty. And the robe of the Lord filled the temple. His majesty is immeasurable. You cannot measure the majesty of God. And so when you draw to the Father, think that He is royalty. And you are also royalty. You are a royal priesthood, a chosen nation. People belonging to God. Because your Father is King, who are you? King King? Coming King? Who, who are you, by the way? If your Father is King, do you treat yourself as a royalty? Or a trash. Uh, we, we, we hear our culture is a culture of blessing. And we, our vision is to heal damaged identities. My friends, if you focus on the place where we are going, you will say, I, will, I am a royal blood. Yeah. And heaven is the place for royalty. The streets are? Kinsa may nai-gold ang ang ipon. Diba? Kanang mga... We like gold. Saudi gold, China gold, Bisagonsang gold, Philippine gold. Or asa na nga gold sa di walwal. We like gold. In heaven, ang gold tamakan lang. Hmm. Maulaw ka kung imong i... Bitay-bitay kay tamakan rana. Kanang inyong gold, sige, ipang drop na naron. Kay tamak-tamakan na nato. Hmm, ipang kuha na diha. Oh, kay akong puniton mo niya. <laughs> Sa langit, ang atong floor gold. Because we deserve that. We are royalty. The king who is lifted up. High, lifted up, seated on a throne. His robe filled the temple. He is so majestic. He is so sovereign that even if King Isaiah died, the Lord did not die. And so the Lord has to show Isaiah, earthly kings die, but I'm still seated here. I'm in control. You know, when a king dies, in, especially in Israel, it was chaos. It was tragedy. When that king is also good, you can intensify the, the mourning. And so they, they mourn. They grieve for King Uzziah. And yet the Lord has shown prophet Isaiah, I am in control. You focus in me and you focus here in heaven. I'm in, the, <laughs> I'm in charge, Isaiah. And so my friends, God can never be replaced by anyone on his throne. Nobody. In fact, Psalm 102, the Psalm of David says, the king's will honor God. Kings of the world will recognize that God's sovereignty is higher than their sovereignty. They will honor Him. In fact, every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. The day will surely come that every knee, what's the meaning every knee? Naba mo'y tuhod? Kisa may way tuhod din eh. Omo na gisulat. There is Philippians chapter 2. Every knee, kung wa mo'y tuhod, uh, ayaw na lang. But every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. If you don't have a tongue, never mind. But if you have a tongue, you will proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord over all. Amen. So at the end of the age, my friends, God's word will stand. God's declaration will stand. Isaiah 55, 11, if you are familiar with that. My word will not return to me void. It will accomplish its purpose. And it will prosper. You see the, the, the degree? It will not return void. Because it will accomplish. And it will even prosper. And so don't underestimate the word of the powerful God. When God says this, and you receive that revelation, be ready. It will not return to him empty. It will accomplish and even prosper.
And so, Pastor Dave has told us many times, this is a breakthrough year. This is a breakthrough year. What God has spoken to you, claim it. Hold on to it. Because it will come to pass. It will accomplish it per its purpose. It will even prosper. St. Peter has this to remind us. Those in the first century scattered in the province of Asia Minor, he told them, they, were, they got weary and they were because they were persecuted and suffering. And so he told them this in 1 Peter. St. Peter said, Friends, you know, this world is not your home. So don't make yourselves cozy in it. Don't make yourself cozy in it. Don't indulge your ego at the expense of your soul. Live an exemplary life among the natives so that your actions will refute their prejudices. Then they'll be won over to God's side and be there to join in the celebration when he arrives. What a sweet day. They will join in the celebration if we tell them. We will tell them, my friends, God has placed us a prepared a mansion for you in my father's house. Kinsa man nga amahan. Basta siya. Are many mansions. That's why the Lord said, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have not told you. But I will go in advance and prepare a place for you so that I will come back and get you, bring you to that place. And this is heaven. You know what makes heaven heaven? Because Jesus Christ is there. What makes hell hell? Because of the presence of God is not there. You can describe fire or warm, scorching heat, any description of that. But what makes hell hell is the absence of our heavenly Father. So are you focusing on the right place? What's your focus? Ladislawa, Woodridge? Uh, what's your focus? Uh, Aeon Tower? or well, What's your focus? Uh, USA, Europe? What's your focus? What's, what's the place in your mind? What's your focus? What's, what place is in your mind that is influencing your lifestyle? Is it heaven, my friends, or the limited temporary earthly dwelling? Is your mind on that only? My friends, if you are the heavenly father's child, focus on the right place, heaven. This is not our home today. Your final address is, is heaven. So let me give you, I, I always go to a funeral. Uh, I heard this illustration one day. There, there were two competing banks. You, you, I've, I've shared this story. And those banks were so rival that they did not have anything to say good. They cannot say anything, any appreciation to the other rival bank. But the other bank, Bank A decided to transfer, maybe one kilometer away. And so Bank B was so happy, the manager. And so he ordered, a, he called up a flower shop. Can I order a flower? And I'll give, uh, tomorrow is the opening of that branch, branch uh, Bank A. Uh, can I order a flower? But Bank A, I don't know if it's, uh, if it's God ordained. Bank A, uh, at, across Bank A was a funeral homes. And so when this flower was delivered, the flower that was ordered by Bank B was sent to the funeral. And the grieving family ordered also a flower from that flower shop. That flower was delivered accidentally to the bank that was opening. You see, the, what, what the, the message in the bank says, our deepest sympathy. Oh, that's, that's, that's their message, the flower. And the, the grieving family received a flower with this message. Welcome to your new location. <laughs> Welcome to your new location. Diba new location ah? Kay Lungon. And then six feet below the ground. Depending if you are cremated. So in a... My friends are permanent location if you have Christ in you is heaven that's your final destination that's your final address 
This address today, number 49, Countryside, Phase 2, Village, Bangkal, that's not permanent for us. Our final address is in heaven. And so be ready. Paul said, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Because he will be finally with the Lord in heaven and worshiping endlessly. And so if we are sloppy in our worship here, this is just a practice. In heaven, it will be eternal worship. So think of it. If you are sloppy with your worship here, I don't know, there in heaven. Maybe there's a room for a sloppy worshipers. <laughs> if you easily get tired of worshiping here, I don't know if you'll be accommodated in heaven. Eh, siguro. Dili man sa atong skills of worship. Prepare yourself for that endless worship. Because there, we will worship endlessly. We focus on the right person. We focus on the right place. So that, thirdly, we can also focus on the right personality. This is the third point. The Lord prayer goes, Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. One, letter A, one of God's distinct personalities and attributes is His holiness. Be holy, He said to the Israelites, for I am holy. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 1 to 2. The Lord said to Moses, speak to the entire assembly of Israel and say to them, Be holy because the Lord your God, I'm holy. That's New International Version. Le Leviticus 19, 1-2. You take note of that. God's holiness, my friends, reveals His totality of His attributes. Holiness is the total sum of His attributes. His faithfulness, His righteousness, His justice, His mercy, His compassion is summarized by the nature holiness. And so in Isaiah the angels, the cherubim said, shouted in worship, Holy, holy, holy. We sang that. Holy, holy God. It did not say love, love, love. Though it's an attribute of God. It did not say mercy, mercy, or faithful, faith. No. What the cherubim said, the cherubim said, is this. Holy, holy, Holy. That's the pinnacle. That's the epitome of God's attribute. His holiness. No sin can exist in His presence. And in God's holiness, He, be he became righteous because He is holy. And in His justice, God accounts every sin committed. He is the great CPA. He is a certified public private accountant, public accountant. Nobody can equal to God's ability to account every sin. And so if you have still have hidden sins, you have, do you have secret sins? Can you, don't, don't share it, it's secret. <laughs> God will account for every sin you have committed because he is a righteous God. And he punishes every sinner, but you know, in his love, he can erase every sin. The past, even the present that you will commit, even your future sins are forgiven and washed away by the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Lord, thank you for the cleansing. Thank you for the remission. Your blood washes our sins away. And so we stand in the presence of our heavenly God who is king and righteous and holy king without blemish. We stand because of Jesus Christ who died for us. We stand there. The Father sees the righteousness of Christ in us. That's what the cross means. Christ's righteousness in every Christian. It's not your righteousness. And so it's never, be, it's never really our performance. Our righteousness is imputed. It has been given to us through Jesus Christ. 
His love through the redemptive work of Christ on the cross made possible our pardon, our forgiveness, our cleansing. There is one gulf that separates a holy God and a mere human. You know that? S-I-N. Sin separates us. But when Jesus Christ is acknowledged what he did on the cross, the, the gulf is gone because he breached that gulf. God's holiness tells us also that he is set apart from all creation. His holiness demands justice and so sin should be punished. That's number one. But the redemption was, was done. And so forgiveness is possible. But secondly, God's holiness means that he is set apart. He is totally distinct and different. Nobody is equal, co-equal to God. We are creation and he is creator. Nobody can say and claim I'm creator. No. There is only one creator. And that's, that makes him holy. Set apart. Distinct. And so when Paul says in Romans 12, 1 and 2, by in view of God's mercy, I, 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 I plead, offer your bodies as living sacrifice. Holy. That word holy means set apart. If you see a red plate, that means for official use also. For official use only. Red plate. Kamo nga naana si Kristo na sa inyong agtang tanawan ng agtang sa inyong kauban. For God's use only. You are set apart. You are red plate. <laughs> You are for God's use only. And so your hands, your feet, everything in you is for a holy use. You have been set apart wherever you are in governance, in the public service, in the private sector, wherever you are, you're running your own business. Remember, you are for God's use only. You are holy. You are called to be holy for our God is holy. One song goes, there is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I can search for all eternity long and find there is none like you. My friends, there is no one like our God. He is the Alpha. He is the Omega. He is the beginning and the end, the great I am, the Lord of the universe, the Holy of holies he is the holiest and so we bow we come to him with pure hearts we come to him with humble hearts lord we seek your holy face make us holy also what keeps you away from god maybe because we still have we harbor sin sin keeps us away from god you know what's the solution of that confess if we confess our sin, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Every day, my friends, even before you enter the sanctuary, even before you come to this church, you confess, Lord, I have sinned in my thoughts, sinned in my words, I have sinned against you and against my neighbor. In my actions, cleanse me, forgive me, and I will be worthy to enter your throne of grace, your holy presence. Let's go to the last. Is this the last part? The fourth. First is focus on our Heavenly Father, the person. Focus on the right place, and that's uh, heaven. And desire holiness. That's the personality. That's the attribute we desire to have. Last, but not the least, to sharpen our vertical thinking, our spiritual sensitivity, we must focus on the right practice. This one practice that we should never forget, which I mentioned in the second part, is, is honoring God. Can, can we read, uh, uh, go back to Matthew 6, verse 9? Can all of us read this verse again? Uh, the Lord's Prayer. Ready? Begin. Our 
In simple English, that's a NIV, simple English translation, uh, it says here, Father in heaven, may your name be always, may name be always kept holy. In New Living Translation, Father in heaven, we honor your holy name. Honor. We worship. We give praise. We bow down to your holy name. That's what it means. The right practice is giving honor where honor is due. The New Living Translation says this, we honor your holy name. What should we honor? His holy name. The name that is set apart. The name that no one can equal. We honor his holy name. Worship, my friends, come from the word worth-ship. Or giving due to the person being adored. You give what is due to God. Because he is majestic. Because he is sovereign. And then, so your worship should be also equal to that. To that majestic God. No other person deserves our highest honor and adoration except God alone who is worthy of all our praise and adoration. I love the song, Dungog Og Himaya. Do you still sing that song? Do you, do you really give Dungog Og Himaya? Sa langit og sa yuta, ang tanan o Diyos kanimo lamang. Do you really sing that with all your heart? Lord, wa na joy. Laing dungog, bisagwa ko'y dungog, Lord. Pero ikaw, madungganon. You are to be honored. You know what? God is really gracious. The moment we honor Him, He will also honor us. And so the blessing that you are experiencing is a direct result, is a consequence of you honoring God. Don't stop honoring the Lord. Don't stop worshiping Him. My, my friends, giving honor to God is our highest privilege as human beings. Do you know that? Your highest privilege as a, crea as a creation, as a human, is honoring God. Because to honor God is to say, Lord, thank you for creating me. Thank you, Lord, that I was born. Thank you that I am your child. You know, our worship and adoration is a prelude to our eternal worship. And so if we honor here, we will not have difficulty when he comes again. It's automatic. Honoring is automatic. Philip Yancey in his book, let me quote him, from What's So Amazing About Grace, and let me conclude with this story. He tells a story of Ernest Hemingway about a Spanish father who was looking for his son, long lost son. And so the father in Spain, in uh, Madrid, he, he decided to, he was remorseful because he hurt his son, his son uh, went away, and now the father was remorseful. The, he took this ad in their national paper, paper El Liberal, uh, like the Philippine uh, Inquirer. So he put this ad, uh, listen to, to what the father wrote, placed in the ad. Paco, that, that's, that's the name of the son. Paco, meet me at Hotel Montana. I don't know if it's uh, at the Atornites uh, Hotel, Montana. Hotel Montana, noon, Tuesday, all is forgiven, Papa. Twelve words. All is forgiven, Papa. Paco, meet me at Hotel Montana, noon time. Tuesday, that's the day. And so what happened, you know, Paco is a common name in Spain, like Pedro. You see them anywhere in the streets, in the malls, no? Like that. So on that day, Tuesday, noontime, Hotel Montana, what happened? 800 young men named Paco came. <laughs> but they cannot uh, occupy the hotel, so they were in the lobby and outside. So they were in the square, 800 of them waiting for, uh, looking for a father. Looking for a father. Desiring to be loved. Desiring to be embraced. Desiring to be forgiven. Paco, are you one of the Paco? Saan ka na Paco ngayon? Baka na Paco ka pa sa kasalanan. You see, we are, sometimes we are like Paco. We are out there lost, no meaning, empty, struggling, suffering. 
Where Heavenly Father is calling us, my son, my daughter, come back. Noon time, Tuesday. Be born again. Accept Jesus Christ. Maybe today, today is the day of your salvation. Come, come back. Because your meaning, your satisfaction, your fulfillment, your identity is with me. There are many Pacos out there. What are we doing as a church? Paco in, in the universities, in the schools, who desire a, a, a loving relationship with God. Paco in, in the government, Paco in the businesses, the marketplace. Can we tell them, God is waiting for you? God has a message for you. You come to Him because there, it is there where you belong. It is in the presence of God that you will find meaning in your life. And so what I'm doing today is just awakening your spiritual sensitivity. You have already Christ in you. We rejoice. Lord, thank you for the salvation. But it's not the end. We are still called to go out and tell the people, people, if you are, they are your neighbors, if they are your workmates, or they are your classmates, or they are your enemies, <laughs> They need our Heavenly Father so that they can also pray, pray our Father who art in heaven. We honor your holy name. My friends, the message of the Lord is clear. Focus on the Father, the right person. Focus on the right place. Heaven, that's where we are going, where we are headed. Focus on the right personality, being holy. Because I am holy. Desire holiness every day, every moment. Focus on the right practice. Giving honor to the Lord. Lord, we pray that our honor will be yours. Nobody will grab your glory. Nobody will say, I did this. I did it my way. This is not the right way. It is always, Lord, it's your way. And so whatever we accomplish here on earth, whatever you accomplish in your work, Whatever we accomplish in the ministry, it is all for the honor of our God. Let us pray. Our Father, our dear Heavenly Father, we need your loving embrace. Father, I pray that you will let each one of us feel your embrace right now. Those who are feeling down, oh God, Lord, embrace them. Lord, those who are feeling confused and lost, Father, be their God. I pray that you will meet their needs. You have the best, you, our best, Lord, in your mind, Lord. And you are able, O oh God, exceedingly, abundantly, more than we ask or imagine, Lord. You can provide, Lord God. Lord, we, if we are always anxious, anybody of us here who are feeling anxious, or who are in the habit of being anxious, Lord, forgive us. Help us to trust in you, the great provider, our Jehovah Jireh, our provider, Lord. You have your, Lord, you can provide anything we have, Lord. You are the Lord of the universe. Reveal yourself to us, Father God. I pray, Lord, for those even who are unsure of their salvation, I pray today, that they will open their hearts to our Lord Jesus Christ. They will humble themselves. They will listen to the good news of the gospel that Jesus came to die for them, to cleanse them from all their sins. Lord, I pray today they will receive you, Lord. They will accept you, Lord Jesus Christ, what you have done at the cross of Calvary. Lord, thank you because you have granted them salvation today. For us who are already saved, for us who are Christians, Lord, sometimes we worry. And so we pray beginning today, Lord. Make us trustful. Lord, make us look to you. Focus on you, Father, who can provide everything we need. Focus on heaven because that's where we are headed. And make us focus on developing holiness in our lives, oh God. Dying to ourselves and living for the Lord Jesus Christ every day. And help us, oh God, to give you honor to give you glory, to give you praises every moment of the day of our lives. And so this morning, we praise you, Father. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Holy Spirit. 
we give back all thanksgiving, glory and honor to you alone, our majestic heavenly Father, King of kings, Lord of lords, in Jesus' name. Amen.